Namaskar and a warm welcome to the last session on the topic Building Synergies between SMEs and MNCs to integrate SMEs into the global value chain. The growth phase of India's electronics industry in the past decade has been predominantly a story of large and global companies. The involvement of MSME in the industry has largely been obscured by the focus by the dominant organizations. The government has brought the spotlight back on the MSME in the electronics industry with the stated goal of developing 500 champion MSMEs from this industry. This increasing investment into India's electronics industry by global players will result in a domino effect which will immensely benefit MSME, provided the right structures and partnerships are built. The policy measures of the government towards large investment will lead to partnership with MSMEs as large organizations look for nimbleness, specific capabilities, lower cost and risk aversion. Industry leaders from manufacturers, independent experts and government officials throw light on the existing plans and sharpen their approach for better results in the absorbing session. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Marwa, a distinguished speaker, is not able to join us this evening. He sends us his best wishes for the session and looks forward to the session summary recommendations. A very warm welcome to our distinguished speakers for the session. With these words, I would like to now invite Ms. Ashita Gupta, Chairperson, Mate MSME Chapter and CEO Smile Electronics. I request her to kindly give the welcome address and then present the knowledge paper. Over to you. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Ms. Pani. Uh, welcome to one and all our distinguished speakers, the audience. Um, you know, this might be the last session of MIT, but it definitely is one of the most relevant ones, especially in relation to the growth of the Indian economy. We have distinguished speakers today, um, like Mr. Sudhir Goyal, Mr. Rahul Gupta, Mr. Amrit Manwani, uh, Mr. Rajesh Raizada, Mr. Vikram Reddy Pali. Uh, Mr. Sembian, Mr. Sriji, uh, and all of them bring together years and years and years of experience. And what I think we all have to gain from this is learn, um, you know, learn from them, be open to new ideas, be open to, you know, learn about how they have created BMITs in their own organization. So thank you, all the panelists. Thank you, Mr. Ganesh, for moderating the sessions. Um, and, and thank you for all the distinguished speakers to participate and give your time to this very important course. Um, let me start by, uh, you know, Mate has given me the unique opportunity to present a paper on the intercollaborations between MSMEs and large companies. Um, let me just start by presenting that. Nishi, please share. While we're waiting for the presentation to come up, I think we can start with a brief introduction, at least. Um, you know, we're going to talk about three, four very key points. I'm going to keep it brief. Uh, we're going to talk about what the SME sector really means to the Indian economy. We're going to talk about the challenges faced by the SME sectors. Uh, we're going to talk about possible collaborative moves that would be key to building the SME sector in India, while also talking about what are the challenges to create that collaborative um, effort in India. We're also going to end with some of the strategic advices that we think we have put together at MATE, um, and we think that they will be key in bringing up the sector. Uh, so, Sandeep ji, do you want me to wait or go ahead? I'm sharing. I'm sharing. Dishi has got some connection issues, so I'm sharing your presentation. Sure. Thank you for that. Are you able to see the screen? Yes, I am. Yes. Thank you so much. 
Okay, so the first slide really talks about who we are as the SME sector, right? Um, we've been as Smile, we've been a part of this SME sector for the last twenty years. Uh, today, it's you know the SME sector is is one of the large, second largest employee in India. Um, India's GDP has grown at a fast pace in comparison to the global economy, thanks to the SME sector. You know, the SME sector has been a key driver in growth, both at GDP and GBA. Um, I think the models of Taiwan and China of the past have proven themselves as a possibility of the SME sector fueling growth in the economies uh, in India specifically. It's it's where the government brings that attention today. You know, the government today has been addressing various weak spots, including creating policies that drive investment, that that build on skill set availabilities in the country, um, that work on creating single window uh, connect with the government, uh, which not only ease policy making but also ease FDI. Uh, it it reduces bureaucracy. It makes uh, doing business in India simpler, easier more conversational um, than hierarchical. And it also brings all of us together on the same platform to, to converse with the government, which was very much absent in the past, to see what is re required to recruit the right resources uh, and to fructify the partnerships that are at the precipice of build in India. Uh, let's, talk about, uh, gonna, let's talk about the challenges that really uh, we face at the as an SME sector, right? Primarily, five things. Uh, it starts with the young demographic. It's, it starts with you know we have a huge young demographic in the country, but there is a uh, relatively low skill set availability. Um, by participation in clusters, by participation in certification programs for employability, that will really skill manpower that's available today. This could be one of we could turn this from a weak point to, to one of our strengths. Um, also, I think the government has been working in the past five years to bring about changes in labor laws. Specifically, the last 18 months has seen a, a huge change in what the government proposes to, to build about skill set availability through clusters and, and certifications. And definitely the industry is going to, to promote that. But what that also does is address the need to it to build up infrastructure, both physically and digitally. You know, the availability of clusters uh, brings in ease of logistics. Um, the government, primarily through the last budget, has, has had a huge bias in bringing up the logistics of the country, uh, whether that's port, airport, road, and simplifying customs to facilitate, you know, growth of the ecosystem. And um, growth of the ecosystem and, and you know, it addresses costs. Now, cost I, I, is obviously a huge factor that plays a role in um, in talking about what the MNCs look for. It, it's very difficult for larger companies to create a local presence and find local assistance and create scale again. Right? They did this um, over the last 20 years in China. They have to do this again in a different country. Could be Asia, could be Vietnam, could be Africa. We obviously hope that India will be the next destination, but there are a few things that we have to do to take care to bring about that change in India. Now, Indian companies really have to build on quality, productivity requirements, and compliance. When I say quality, I mean really It seems she has got some connection issues. Uh, yes, we can't uh, yeah, hear yeah. the yeah. voice. Yeah. Let me check with her. The power may have gone and it may be coming back. That's the point. Okay. Mostly, mostly it happens. Yeah, with virtual events, we all have to have patience. Sometimes some things are not uh, in our control.
So we'll just wait for a few minutes. Uh, let us see how uh, uh, she gets back. Puneet, if you have her number, you can maybe give her a call so we can figure out at least what the situation is. Sorry, I think I lost network there in the middle. We're glad to see you that. back. Welcome back. Thank Please you. Continue. Really sorry for the disruption. Uh, it's raining in Bangalore after a couple of months. And so this disruption is, you know, one of the reasons why the Indian government needs to work more on, on building. We again lost you, Ashita. I think it is because of the rains. Uh, probably there is some disruption. Uh, we'll just wait for uh, one more minute. This is the last session. We are not in a hurry. We'll just wait for a couple of minutes for her. Yeah, Ashidaji, you are back, but we cannot hear you. Ashidaji, we cannot hear you. You are not on mute, but we cannot hear you. Let me communicate with her and we can continue. And then let me communicate this to her. Uh, Sanati, I suggest that we can continue. Um, so you, uh, okay, all right, then we'll just move on to the next uh, presentation. And uh, then when she's back, then we can uh, go back to her uh, presentation. Precisely. So, uh, okay. All right, then uh, I'd like to now uh, invite Mr. Sudhir Goyal, Chief Business Officer, Acer India, to kindly share the industry perspective with us. Mr. Goyal, please. Thank you. Can you hear me? Because I'm also yes. from Bangalore. I thought uh, uh, yes. it should happen that the, you can't hear from the Bangalore. Okay, good evening, everyone. Uh, congratulations to me to organize Electronics and Telecom Manufacturing Summit. To the best of my memory, this is the first ever summit of this scale organized by MATE. And I'm particularly happy to see a session on building synergies between MNCs and MSME. I've been part of this IT, ICT space uh, for decades, and my experience of global supply chain shows that if, for a country to grow in manufacturing sector, backbone of small and medium enterprises is must. And this is irrespective of the sector, be it automobile, be it consumer electronics, mobiles, ICT products, anywhere. Unless we have a strong, small and medium business, we, the country, cannot grow. They have an important role to play and add value to large manufacturing organization. Both of them depend on each other in many ways. A study by Harvard School sometime back cited the extent of dependency of the large businesses of the likes of Walmart, Microsoft, etc. on the small and medium enterprises for their existence. In India, if I look at India, the MSME sector in electronics is mainly engaged in the component manufacturing. 
I happened to be a part of a session, and I think uh, some of the audience here were also part. And we realized that uh, there has been the electronic manufacturing in the MSME segment for the various kind of goods, whether telco, whether consumer electronics, etc. But of late, we have also seen the emergence of segment this segment in in EMS business. With the recent focus of the government on making in India. and also the demand spike post pandemic where the technological adoption has become much faster it has resulted in good business opportunities for the small and medium businesses i think we need to understand that in this new era large and small businesses need to coexist in ecosystem i have been part of a i mean i am actually a part of a large organization but we realize that how important whether at a global level or at india level the need, the need for the for a strong small and medium business enterprises you look at auto industry in india it's a good example it's a success success story i mean where the large branded manufacturing is supported by a host of ancillaries in the small and medium segment or you know you take the latest example i think last few years back there was the pli scheme and some incentivization just done for the mobile manufacturing we while we have many global joints manufacturing for various brands we also have a number of msme segments some of them are present here who are contributing to this ecosystem either in form of full assembly or manufacturing the sub components so we can learn and implement a similar business practices in ict sector as well big manufacturers making complex products need to rely on hundreds of smaller suppliers to make specific parts whether it is in india whether it is in china whether it is in taiwan or anywhere else in the world is <clears throat> a sizable percentage of multinationals across the globe get more than one quarter of their total import from small businesses and that underscores the need for imparting standards of quality and good business practices to them by the big builders like us another area which i feel i mean which is still missing and hopefully as we move forward it will start growing is the area where a large corporation can optimize in the field of product design by utilizing capable and small businesses i mean not everyone will be able to deliver those but we know that india especially in the last many decades has been growing in the design sector earlier it was a software now it's getting into the hardware many of the large technology players have their design centers working in india and it will definitely help to optimize both the development cycle for large organization as well as the cost of development and in a in a field in a technical field in a technology field where the product life cycle is so short both of them are equally important the so the large organization can use india for sourcing such expertise which is available with lot of technical talents here i mean ashita was about to touch i think i didn't see her presentation but uh, about the hurdles or the challenges uh, which let's say the small and medium enterprises face in whether it's in terms of demand whether it's in terms of finance sourcing or logistics or design or skills or processes but if we if i remember if you take the survey of the small businesses i think one of the critical problem which they will talk about is the funding in recent month many smes have shut shop especially during the pandemic or significantly reduced their operations due to the lack of funds while in the last few years the government has taken certain initiatives to enable credit lines to msme segment large corporations can definitely add value in resolving this issue to some extent we also need to realize that the cost of arranging these funds in india is still higher than what it is available in many other countries coming back to the cooperation between the large organization and uh, and the small and medium india traditionally and culturally has a tradition of trusteeship which essentially means that the people who have the might must take care of those who don't and i think we need to impart this in our corporate world the semantic may change in the present day as mentorship the first generation entrepreneurs and we have some of them here they need a friend philosopher and guide to deliver 
breakout growth for, for his or her business. In the absence of mentor, the entrepreneur who is good in making a product or developing technology gets bogged down by lack of knowledge in many other areas, be it labor relations, accounting, fundraising, or even marketing for that matter. A culture of mentorship will evolve in the country when successful businessmen allocate quality time and effort to help each other. They should see this as a payback to the society. Taking a few entrepreneurs under their wings will help in a big way. After all, MSME is the large thing, second largest employer in the country after agriculture. I mean, the data which uh, I think was being shown earlier. It accounts for more than third of the overall manufacturing output as per my knowledge. We have many MSME stalwarts in this forum. I'm sure you'll get to hear from them. We have also worked as an organization as an individual to some of them. And my advice as an expert or as for the decades in this sector to them is threefold. Do not compromise on processes and quality control. These are essential for long-term success. Typically, we have seen that during the crisis of shortages or pressure on faster deliveries, you know, all those challenges, we tend to adopt shortcuts. Even if it means the loss of business, adherence of the processes is must. And this is an image which we need to create. We need to deliver, implement. While we may talk about it, the implementation of this at times take a backseat. The second most important aspect is focus on marketing. I remember, I mean, about a month or two months back, I was with one of the MSME in, uh, in, in uh, Noida. We were discussing some business. At the end of it, it was good infrastructure. I said, focus on marketing. Create good quality rich content. Use cost effective digital marketing to create brands in your domain. We, we focus, what we have seen, what my experience says, having seen many, many, many people, many, many uh, organizations, especially in the EMS and the electronic sector, is they are good in what they do, but it is important to talk about it. You talk about certification. I mean, I think uh, just before we lost Ashita, she was talking about certifications. Talk about certification of internal standard and the processes, the skill sets. Talk about this in your marketing capsule. Don't only depend on networking and word of mouth to get the business. That's not the way it will work. And especially when our country is targeting global supply chain, it will help you to acquire global customers who are keen to look at India but are not confident of the skills and infrastructure. And believe you me, the number of discussions which we have with some of the large giants based out of Taiwan and China is same. They still feel that, I mean, and this is this address to the EMS place here, we are still not SMT ready. While we know we have seen all those equipment, machinery, processes which are used anywhere else, we know that we are equally equipped. But maybe we have not been able to talk about it, market it. We have, so don't just depend on the PPTs. Create good amount, good videos. Post it, use it. Somewhere down the line, I'm sure the organizations like Mate and many of, the, many of us will be broadcasting it, will be amplifying it. That will help to create image. It will help to create a brand. Since the product life cycle of this segment is short, optimum utilization of infrastructure is must. That's the only way you can get your return on investment. And that will be also possible when we manufacture for many brands together. And they would be competing with each other. We have Mr. Rahul Gupta uh, also in the audience. And he has, in his professional career, he's worked in some of the organizations who are making the products of multiple brands. But the kind of a business ethics and the was, which has followed, where you know that there is a non-disclosure, there is a confidentiality, there is a trust between the SMB and the uh, and the parent organization say that, let's say the, the patents or the processes or the business uh, data will not be leaked. And it, 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 it cannot be only at the level of top management. We can have the top management commit. It is important that each and every person, right from the technician who's working on a shop floor, etc., who's working, who knows that what are the various brands which are getting manufactured, does not misutilize this information or talk about it. So the confidence level of the parent brand who's getting it manufactured through the um, small and medium business, I think the ethics and best practices must be followed. In my summary, we are at a crossroad where Make in India is an opportunity. 
both for MNCs and SME segment to work together and to make India a manufacturing hub for electronic segment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Goyal, for sharing the industry perspective with us. I think Ashita is back with us. Uh, is uh, Ashita, are you ready to continue your presentation? Yes, I am. I'm so sorry for the interruption. Okay, please continue. No uh, problem, please continue. Thank you. I think Sudhirji very, very rightly summarized everything that we do face as challenges. And I don't think what I can... I don't think I can add anything more other than the fact that, you know, I can't stress enough on you have to build a business ethically, you have to build a business with the right skill sets, but you also have to be able to drive a positive cash flow and drive value add with your customer. And I think, uh, thank you Sudhirji for, even though you didn't see my presentation, you summarized all the challenges that the SME sector faces and, you know, stalwarts of the SME sector, I don't, uh, I don't doubt anything that you said. Um, I think I'm on the third slide of my presentation. And before you lose me uh, at all again, I, I think I just would like to summarize very quickly. But um, in terms of what are the opportunities that are, available, that are available for SMEs and MNCs working together, I'd like to touch upon, you know, uh, driving productivity, uh, driving quality, and driving, uh, you know, a, su a sufficient supply chain. All of these are extremely important in building an ecosystem that, that functions. Um, and that has to be supported with the right skill sets. Uh, the last slide of my presentation just talks about, you know, some of the uh, recommendations that we would give to the uh, SME and MNC collaborative forums. The only three things that I'd like to say is, one, we need to create knowledge hubs of um, what it takes to build scale. Uh, if we look at the Chinese story, China had Hong Kong and Taiwan, who already presented as the uh, gateway systems, who knew what it what it meant to work in a global environment, and that was really translated into the local level in China mainland. So we really need to create islands of, of knowledge in India. Uh, secondly, I think we need to drive a industry-wide platform that focuses not only on visibility but also focuses on enforcing contracts. Contractual agreements in India, that's one of the biggest care points, I think, for MNCs working with SMEs. What will drive what you promise on the table, right? So again, if we look at the China story, they had Alibaba. Um, if we can create through industry forums and collaborative events like working with Mate and Alcina, if we can drive uh, a platform that creates visibility throughout the industry, I think that will add to our leverage that will add to our benefit and the last thing i want to talk about is really through these industry forums through our knowledge and you know through working with global mncs that already exist in india understand who are the right partners with you because it takes time uh, for the sme sector to find the right partner who will be able to teach you who will be able to collaborate with you not just on requirements in quality but also requirements in competence in culture your customer drives your culture i mean this is true for most of the SME industries. Working with an MNC, it will completely change you. And so be prepared to learn, be prepared to uh, update yourself. And, you know, good luck to the entire SME industry in India. That's, that's all I'd like to say. Thank you, Ms. Ashita Gupta, uh, for your presentation. Uh, we are now ready to uh, launch the Mate Eventium report on MSME MNC synergy. May I please request Mr. Nitin Kunkolinkar, President Mate, to kindly do the needful and requesting other dignitaries to also join in. Can we have the virtual launch, please? All right, uh, congratulations. We have had the 
Uh, now, ladies and gentlemen, it is time for a panel discussion. A very warm welcome to Sri Ganesh Shivani, MD Matrix, Comsec. Uh, a very warm Sanati, welcome to you. Um, Sanati, sorry for interjecting. Uh, we have a presentation from Mr. Ravi also. Uh, I'm not aware of this, but uh, uh, please let's have the presentation. Then we will uh, go on to a panel discussion. Yeah, sure. Uh, Mr. Ravi, we are sharing your presentation. You can start your presentation, please. Mr. Tripathi, are you there? Looks like he's also facing some connection issues. I, I, I think I think we go ahead with our panel discussion and then we can come back on this. Sure, we'll do that. In that case, shall... all right, all right. We'll just continue with the panel discussion. Uh, so, so once again, a very warm welcome to the panel discussion. Uh, we have our session moderator, Sri Ganesh Shivani, MD Matrix uh, Comsec. Very warm welcome to you. I take this opportunity to welcome our panelists. We have with us Mr. Rahul Gupta. MD Smile Security, Mr. Amrit Manwani, MD, Mr. Vikram Redalapalli, MD, RDP, Mr. Rajesh Raizada, Advisor Mate and Managing Partner, Culture Well, Mr. V. Sambian, Manufacturing Head, Motorola, Mr. Srijit C, CEO, Coconix, and Mr. Ravi Tripathi, Procurement Manager. Mr. Giovanni, are you there? I think Mr. Ganesh has got uh, a Can you, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Um, am I hurt? Hello. Yo, um, we, we can hear you, but it's different people. Hello. Yeah, not better. It's better now. Uh, it's yes. better now. It's better, better. Yeah. Okay. So, good evening, all, and um, uh, thank you for this opportunity of uh, moderating this uh, uh, panel discussion. And uh, welcome all the panelists. Uh, uh, just to create a very brief uh, background, uh, Mr. Sudhir Guel and, and uh, Pita actually they gave two different perspectives. One from uh, SME company, other from the large, and here we are talking about uh, you know, creating a synergy between these two perspectives. So the uh, the people in the panel are actually coming from a very diverse background. Uh, you know, like the large companies, the people who are running SME. So I think it's going to be very interesting and um, uh, a discussion for all of us. The nature of discussion is um, we are more kind of uh, colleagues and uh, feel free to kind of share your views uh, on um, any of the topics. Um, briefly, uh, take this discussion forward, uh, link down rather than you know uh, continue or talking, repeating the what is already been said. So I think let's try to take this discussion forward by first. Uh, so I have primarily created the nature of our discussion. What I am proposing is there are going to be three questions. And this uh, one question actually uh, will ask all the you know, kind of uh, take it around the table and ask everyone to kind of share their views on this question. 
so in all we will have three questions and then we get time actually we'll have uh, concluding remarks from uh, all of you so um long story short the first question is we are talking about creating this uh, synergy between uh, uh, large companies whether indian companies or uh, mncs and indian smes so the first question uh, in my opinion is uh, uh, why do we need this uh, synergies uh, what are the benefits uh, for all the st uh, stakeholders the uh, three stakeholders primarily if we identify one is of course sme themselves then the large companies and the third stakeholder less uh, uh, government and um, so why do we need this uh, synergies from uh, for from this three uh, stakeholders point of view and uh, um, what kind of large companies and uh, what kind of uh, smes we are talking about where are these kind of uh, players so to start with mr manwani like uh, uh, can you please uh, uh, you know uh, throw some light on this uh, why do we need this uh, synergies for all these stakeholders and what kind of large companies we are talking about and what kind of uh, Miss, we are talking about here. Parmani, was my uh, was I audible? Or I need to repeat this question. Uh, no, Shita. you are you are by and large audible. Uh, so I get your question. Uh, good evening, everybody, and uh, first of all, I thank um, uh, Mate to give me this opportunity to share my experiences uh, with uh, you know the panelists as well as the audience. Uh, thank you once again for that. Uh, well, you know, um, why the synergy? Uh, it's very important, particularly for the electronic component industry, uh, because the electronic component industry, the way it is today in India, uh, you know, it has a long way to go to be a part of the, you know, overall supply chain, both in India as well as globally. So, you know, um, interaction and synergy with uh, not only the large companies in India, but also with the... <clears throat> Uh, MNCs who are trying to come into India and have their footprints in India. Uh, so it's very important that, uh, particularly in the component electronic component space, the SMEs in India have a very uh, strong role to play, but they have to find a way uh, to connect with uh, both the ends. One is, you know, the the MNCs who are who have the technology, the knowledge, the scale, and uh, also on the customer side, the large companies who are the users of components, electronic components in India and who also supply uh, complete products, including uh, electronic components uh, worldwide. So in that context, I, what I would like to, uh, you know, just spend a couple of minutes uh, sharing my experience um, with the audience here. Uh, we, uh, you know, I'm a CMD of a Sarsra uh, Electronics Group of Companies and uh, we have been uh, earlier, uh, you know, we uh, we started with printed circuit board manufacturing, moved on to EMS, but um, the way the opportunities are coming up, we have uh, we have actually focused primarily <clears throat> on high technology components, and right now we are venturing out on uh, uh, server motherboards and also on uh, semiconductor packaging. Uh, what we did was uh, that we identified some of the large MNCs uh, in Taiwan. Uh, we also looked at other countries like Japan and Korea, but uh, we found that there was more synergy possible with uh, some of the Taiwanese companies. So uh, for the uh, server motherboard, we, we had a joint venture with MyTech, which is a Fortune 500 company out of Taiwan. But you know the, the experience that I want to share with the group here uh, and the audience here is that you know it is not really very easy uh, to uh, uh, set up uh, this kind of a relationship. It takes a long time because, um, you know, the, the perspective of a large MNC who's trying to have a footprint in India is very different from uh, an SME company, uh, you know, uh, who are uh, active in India and focusing mainly either on a niche market in India or even niche market globally. So, you know, firstly, we have to align the thinking of both the sides. Uh, so, you know, that is going to be a big challenge. Uh, but, uh, you know, if you persevere, uh, there would be definitely a success. And I can only say that uh, 
uh, you know, although it may take some time, but it would eventually happen if you can uh, continue to persevere with the with the idea that uh, you have to join hands with uh, some of the large companies overseas to bring them to India and uh, gain uh, from their knowledge, uh, not only in terms of technology, but marketing uh, and, uh, you know, production technology, uh, the quality, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, so, uh, you know, to give you my example, it took us a good two years before uh, we actually had a joint venture agreement. So, you know, those people who are looking at setting up uh, uh, JVs with uh, foreign companies, uh, you must have, uh, you know, the patience of Buddha, as they say, uh, to, uh, you know, you cannot expect results overnight, but you have to be at it, uh, uh, you know, for a long haul uh, to be able to succeed. Uh, currently, we are also looking at, uh, for example, in uh, semiconductor packaging, where we think there is immense scope because, uh, uh, you know, uh, semiconductors, as we all know, are in, in short supply worldwide and India does not have any ecosystem whatsoever in terms of sem semiconductor manufacturing. So we have taken it upon ourselves to get into, uh, uh, you know, uh, semiconductor packaging and we are of course focusing only on memory packaging but there also we are uh, talking to another Taiwanese companies because you know uh, a lot of these companies having uh, realized that uh, certain other markets are very uh, uh, you know saturated and India is still a very big market so they they want some footprint here so first we have to identify those companies who want to have a footprint in the country and then you know we have to align with their thinking, what what is what are they looking for in India? Obviously, everybody is looking uh, for the Indian market. So, uh, you know, we have to present ourselves to them uh, in the right perspective. What kind of market uh, the India offers to them, and how working together uh, we can uh, as an SME from India. Uh, you know, what kind of help uh, can we give them so that they can uh, you know fast track their entry into India. Um, and uh, I must say that, uh, you know, if if your intentions are right and if your uh, inten uh, intentions are serious, then definitely uh, we would find a way to identify these, um, you know, MNCs overseas and they would uh, be uh, willing to work uh, uh, with the SMEs in India. Uh, you know, some of the, uh, you know, the new changes that the government has brought, brought about, which are very, very encouraging, particularly the PLI scheme. Uh, you know, we uh, in the component verticals, uh, the seven verticals that, uh, uh, you know, the first PLI came from, uh, uh, came out with, uh, um, you know, semiconductor packaging or ATMP as it is called, uh, or OSAT. Um, you know, that was one of the uh, verticals that um, the government uh, supported PLI on. Uh, also, uh, you know, there's this spec scheme where 25% uh, capital subsidy is given. Uh, so those those were enablers to uh, foster the relationship with the joint venture companies because on their own, they would have not been able to perhaps participate in the PLI scheme uh, because they do not want to start from absolutely ground zero. They had, uh, you know, they were looking for somebody who was locally present. They knew the laws of the country. They, they knew the the nuances of this country uh, bureaucracy. So, you know, it was a, we have to project a win-win kind of a situation with, with the MNCs. And of course, the government has been a biggest uh, enabler in that, uh, you know, direction with the PLI scheme as well as the spec scheme. But one more important point that I would like to mention here before I uh, close my, you know, uh, initial, uh, uh, you know, points that I would wish to make that, uh, you know, the state governments also have to pay their own. Uh, the central government, uh, uh, through Ministry of Electronics, have come out with uh, these uh, uh, good schemes. But at the ground level, we find that, uh, that there are challenges uh, with the state governments, particularly the uh, the land issues uh, and um, you know whatever else uh, that goes with the state, which is controlled by the state in terms of power, in terms of uh, uh, you know other uh, you know challenges that we face. Um, uh, some of the states have taken, uh, you know, uh, a very positive attitude. Uh, you know, uh, uh, for example, uh, the state of Uttar Pradesh, uh, Tamil Nadu, um, also Karnataka now. But uh, similarly, other states like Telangana, Rajasthan, Madhya Pradesh should also, you know, um, look at how they can attract uh, SMEs 
to build up uh, an, uh, an ecosystem so that you know the SME industry uh, thrives in the country and uh, becomes part of the global supply chain and uh, it uh, plays a very important role becoming uh, as towards india becoming the manufacturing hub of the world uh, with those remarks i would like to uh, hand it back to uh, to uh, mr jivani uh, thank so, you very much thank you sir uh, mr manmani like uh, i am uh, mr uh, rajesh rajada you have been nurturing and uh, doing consultancy and in the past you have done a lot of collaboration for so uh, the same question just uh, uh, where do you see the larger or you know low hanging fruits or where indian smes actually see bigger opportunities of uh, synergies with large companies which uh, specific industries in the audience or generally who should actually aspire for this kind of uh, yeah uh, mr rajesh you are on mute <clears throat> Thank you very much uh, to giving me uh, this opportunity. So I have uh, worked with SCL for 30, uh, 22 years and done these all things to uh, build up the local manufacturing and how the ecosystem will do. So here the basic requirement which comes up uh, if in the big guys uh, like uh, uh, our uh, Acer, Lenovo, HP, Dell, they have to adapt or foster a Indian manufacturer. The same thing they have done. The collaboration will be happening in them. They have to decide, I have to work with this five, seven companies in India. And if you see global uh, footprint, the today we know Foxconn, everyone know. But in 1994, this was a Honai Corporation, $30 million company. Dell has moved there. And now it's 170 billion. Now they do for everyone. Same thing happened with Vistron, which was a Acer. Uh, Compal is done by uh, Compact Computer. Okay, the Compact has created a Compal. Vistron, Pegatron is an Oasis tech company. Now they are very, very large companies. So here, uh, we have to create an ecosystem where our big, big brothers should adapt and foster SME. And most of the big guys, uh, like uh, big brands, they have to do a lot of other things. They, they are least interested in manufacturing because they find it manufacturing is not a very high value add. They spend their more time on branding, distribution, uh, creating a product. And if this ecosystem, it start happening in India, I think we are there. If you see this uh, uh, today also, if you see uh, any large company are not manufacturing directly. In SME and MSME, mostly we are not looking for a big branding business because we currently we don't have a capability in terms of any marketing branding needs a lot of money to be burned, which business do not generate at a small scale. So here, uh, I request and I think uh, uh, Mate will take up this too. They start uh, fostering some four, five, four, five potential companies in the country and do the bridge gapping in the competence. And because what is happening, uh, which uh, I, Ashta has covered, like certification, quality process are important. Yes, you can do standalone, but when you get a direction from the bigger bigger brother and mostly most of the time what happens the msme larger msme creates the same process with the smaller msme you have to do this type of testing you have to do give this type of reports to me so this will create a continuous evolving ecosystem where msme will be a part of bigger scale manufacturing they will have a visibility of future and this is the recommendation which I want to give. And I think finally this will happen. How fast we can as a team, as a group, we can move on this direction. Second part. So this is the only one recommendation balance. We have discussed a lot of other things. Second part in the current PLI scheme, uh, it is not uh, because government uh, people are not there, but still I want to get this uh, connected.
this all msme in india or sme in india they are uh, very small they are not of of a uh, 2000 crore or so, sort of thing out of that if you take choose 10 three to four will fail like if you see mobile phone the big guys how many people has got a pli this year i think one or two i think samsung has got and uh, no one else has got okay so we have to increase this spectrum uh, we cannot limit to the five people or 10 people which they have notified i think we should talk about the bigger spectrum in msc 2030 and uh, out of 2030 there will be five, five people will per perform or 10 people will perform in end of the year so these are the two points for my side and balance thing we have covered uh, across and uh, during and this is the way uh, uh, we uh, as scl also we grown the ecosystem in india we choose some five vendors every year make them to set out, out of five three to four will come to our expectation and we grow them so there are a lot of companies uh, big names now you are hearing and uh, they become a big brands that they are created and fostered by uh, at that scale uh, certainly uh, uh, dell lenovo hp acer has got a big might they are not looking for india market they are looking for a global market any of the product then they uh, like uh, mr manwani is saying uh, server board server boards currently uh there are big guys uh, he has tied up with one of the big uh, good good company mytech but inventec quanta and these these all all are getting H, all hp servers comes out of quanta boards okay and then hp should take a lead and connect mr manwani company if they have got interest to create a quanta motherboards here so there is a captive market here what what is the challenge uh, mr manwani will face now now he has to create a market also he he will create and now he will create a market so the process will be slow if the large mnc will take over and they they give the captive market india market will be much much uh, faster much much cap more capable than china so that's uh, from my side thank you uh, yes uh, mr rajesh uh, thank you i think uh, primarily uh, you talked about large companies adopting few smes and uh, also you talked about pli uh, pli scheme should be expanded to cover more smes very useful points so i think let's hear the perspective from uh, large mnc we have mr sembian here with us who heads actually manufacturing for motorola so mr sembian what is your perspective about uh, kind of uh, creating synergies with indian smes yeah thanks thanks mr ganesh uh, i guess uh, it was well covered by uh, mr shita mr uh, sudhir and mr manwani and of course mr rajesh also all of those points um pli as is one of the enablers which is uh, can i audible yes okay yeah. pli is one of the enablers uh, which uh, kind of uh, the movement of manufacturing the growth of manufacturing in india which we are uh, witnessing now and as we will see more in the coming years also uh, one such example of course during the organization we are doing but as i said that's an enabler and we need to see like how that gets deep rooted into the overall ecosystem i would uh, kind of uh, say that like what happened in automotive is that there in electronics today in india we are far far away i mean far behind i would say so that has to happen if that has to happen and uh, this smes or maybe even msmes will play a major role in that without this integration from tier to tier complete linking that is not going to happen where we play in the global platform as a competition to china in the electronic industry because automotive will have a different pace uh, what i've seen a couple of decades ago i was i have I've been in automotive industry also in the past. Uh, the way it was grown in India and way it is today, the pace is different uh, as for electronics. In electronics, nobody has time today. The uh, when a global company comes in, they want to pitch in, they want to see who is the cheaper most, and not not cheaper. I would say the lowest cost, and at the same time with a consistent on quality and the reliability aspects. But for these things, 
I wouldn't say this MSME or the SMEs aren't capable today. Um, in my experience, as of course, in the, in the post PLI, in the process of PLI, we have interacted with a few of uh, the Indian companies to see like how we can uh, roll up with them. Uh, there had been, I've, I've seen a very, very key thing where uh, each of these organizations have a very clear core strengths. There's a repository of acumen and experience among these SMEs. But thing is, it stays at one point, the outer portion, uh, the enhancement of how they link it with the overall business, how they can grow on their other aspects have to be kind of looked into. For example, an organization, first of all, being a risk aversion, as I, I saw uh, Ashita was presenting that, uh, starting there, once the commitment is there, start to understand the gaps. Where are we looking? For example, I'll tell you why I'm saying that gap analysis is important. Is like one of, one of these companies here who are talking to me and asking like, I'm trying to get a global company to visit our facility uh, and then feel like if you can get tired with them on the business. I said, don't do it. Today, if you call them and their audit fail, you will be once for all blacklisted. You can never get up there because your score will be too less as what I can see just at overall. First do the gap analysis. Get there, starting from the planning, the material handling processes, the floor controls and systems, quality consciousness, how it is across the organization, the control process and systems, the org structure, all these things have to be well established with the core strength what the organization has and bridge the gaps, making the fundamentals and bringing the basic hygiene, which is required, the basic hygiene. Then you bring the other organizations to uh, visit you, give some, of course, even then probably there'll be a lot of findings, but it will give a confidence to grow the name. Even in this process today, what we have gone through in the last one year, I wouldn't say that, yeah, first step, we got a 90% score of the organization and we started working. No, they were there. We started working with them. We developed, developed, and they're still in the process of working, co-working with them to get them there. So that level of commitment is required from these organizations, get the gaps covered after doing a gap analysis. And one of the points covered by uh, the previous speakers, very clearly, the very important thing, what I see lacking is resource. Some of the key talents have to be taken in because you interact with them. How many of our times you talk to them, the understanding, the IQ capability, I'm sorry to say, but there is a lot of that. I'm not saying everywhere, there are gaps. So what happens is the dependency goes on one person, head of the company. Anything starting from a procurement process to a dispatch process, the head of the company should run. No, that way you can't run an organization with a global company because there will be a lot of processes, process compliances, everything that should be seamlessly running and flowing. So those are things where uh, we have to focus and get this there. For sure, I would say the PLI, the uh, success of PLI clearly lies on how well this industry is deep rooted, taking this as an enabler. Certainly it's not like after five years, no PLI, like what happens? Should the MNC pack up and go or what there? By then, and five years is not enough for me, as I said. I can clearly say that already there. We, within five years, we're not going to get there to where China is today. But at least we have to get prepared ourselves to be there and get the synergies much enhanced and the SMEs to augment their capability to kind of tie up with the global companies. Over to you, Ganesh. Uh, Sambian, uh, thank you. So I think you articulated uh, the kind of expectations uh, large organizations, uh, large companies have from SMEs. So let's uh, go to Mr. Rahul Gupta and uh, you know ask him, uh, 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 Rahul, what do you uh, think uh, the, uh, what are the ways of kind of uh, meeting these uh, expectations? So where are we today, Indian SMEs? And what are our strengths, weaknesses, and uh, are we prepared to take this challenge? Or if yes, then what are the areas we need to focus on to bridge this gap? Uh, Rahul, over to you. So let us understand the characteristic of MSME. MSME is sitting in a cocoon, and they don't know what is happening outside, and the outside doesn't know them. That is the first fundamental point. Secondly, the larger companies have a, a sort of a doubt whether these Indian MSME can deliver or not. So there is a there is a gap. 
just like what he said, there is a huge gap of understanding and perception. That is the first thing I would like to say. Secondly, okay, these are the problems. So what is the solution? In my opinion, the first thing that we need to do is to gather all the MSMEs doing electronics manufacturing together in one forum. Today in India, there is no such database available where you can find out who are the SMEs who are involved in the electronics manufacturing. Secondly, I am not sure about the processes of the large companies in Hello. publishing what is their requirement, what exactly do they want. So both the things are required. Number one, we need to get all the SMEs together so that their portfolio is visible to the large companies, MNCs. And similarly, the large MNC companies need to publish what exactly do they require. I think that is the fundamental step that we need to take to do the matchmaking. From my point of view and whatever I have seen, there is enough strength, enough capability, enough knowledge available in the MSME to produce practically anything that the MNC company may require. I mean, this is what is my, my thinking about this. Um, so, Rahul, uh, thank you. Yes, so uh, you are kind of uh, very positive, confident that, yes, there are capabilities. Uh, what they require is kind of uh, uh, bring, create some kind of forum and bring this to stakeholders together and uh, uh, that's how to make uh, things happen. So, let's, uh, I think, uh, um, uh, go to Srijit. Uh, Srijit, are you? Ah, uh, yeah. So I here is somebody who has already done some work in this area. Uh, they have some uh, uh, collaboration synergy established with a large multinational company, and uh, yet they are uh, kind of SME. So, uh, Srijit, what have been your experiences in terms of uh, the expectations from large companies, and what were your capabilities? And how did you kind of manage to bridge this gap? And uh, uh, what is the progress you made so far? And the you know, kind of work to do kind of, please. Thank you. Thank you, Jivani Ji. And thank you, Maid, for organizing this forum. Very relevant, uh, very relevant discussions. Uh, very important points brought out by Madam Ashita and, and other speakers. Uh, so just to give a short brief on Coconix. Coconix is a a new company in the ESDM sector in India. We are actually owned partly by one of the state government, Kerala state government, partly owns it, and also private sector companies. So we have 51% private, 49% government. So we have the benefit and the shortcomings of both. Uh, so we started the operations uh, in the last uh, two years. Uh, when we started crawling, uh, then COVID hit the whole world. Uh, so in my opinion, in my experience working in India and uh, especially Far East and Kuala Lumpur, uh, Singapore uh, for the past 32 years. So I firmly believe uh, that uh, there is a coexistence possible between the MNCs and uh, the, uh, the big MS, uh, MNCs and the MSME sector in India. But uh, one thing we have to be very clear, uh, definitely at the moment, I don't see any of the Indian MSMEs able to scale up uh, to that uh, point or that uh, uh, that level in which we are able to compete with these big boys. If I say laptop, for example, or the servers, the big four or the big five guys, but there are areas where we can work together. Rightly pointed out by my friend from HCL, Rajesh, yes, uh, there are areas in which the big boys can look at uh, MSME sector in India. But having said that, where are we? Where are we as MSMEs in India? Uh, we are. We have our own challenges. Some of the challenges very well put up by Ashita is like scaling up. 
uh, we have to have a demand aggregation uh, to scale up our operations. We need to have standardizations. Uh, we need to have the government holding us by hand when these Indian companies, I mean Indian companies in the sense, Indian SME sector, which is owned by Indian companies. For us to come to a certain level, certain level in the sense, a level by which we are visible to the big boys. If one of the big boys want to talk to us or they want to start uh, contract manufacturing uh, and contract assembly or contract uh, uh, subcontracting, so we should come to a certain level. To for us, the, for us, must be company to come to a certain level when we crawl and we walk. Till we are able to run, we need the firm handhold by the government sector. Um, I, precisely, I mean government of India. It's very, very encouraging to see a lot of schemes, PLA schemes coming up. But for a company to come up, you need, you face a lot of challenges. During those challenging phases, we expect support from government of India precisely. Where are the supports? What can we have? Anybody, any entrepreneur, entrepreneur I can see Ms. my friend uh, Vicky there. For us to go into and get funding, the conventional banking or the conventional financial sector doesn't help the MSMEs. We discuss about this. There must be, as Rahul Ji put it rightfully, we must have a collaboration of the MSMEs of India. Uh, the cluster, I don't say cluster, but there must be a collaboration and which we should be able to tell the world, look here, we have these, 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 these capacities. You guys want to work? Uh, we must be like Pegatrons or the Vistrons or the Foxcons of, of the world tomorrow. For us to come to that level, first point, we need support. Precisely, we need support when we crawl and walk. Support in the sense of, I don't say price preference, I don't say purchase preference, but there must be a clear dis, dis, uh, a demarcation between where the big boys can operate and there must be a space for the MSMEs of India. I'm sure the, the market is big, the opportunity is big. Definitely, um, I believe MAID can play a major role in demarcating. Excuse me, uh, this is a tender. For example, the, the honorary minister, as uh, finance minister has now mentioned that up to 200 crores, only the Indian companies are in work. Why not we have something like that saying that up to X amount, uh, this is marked for the uh, MSMEs of India. Or if a big multinational company want to work, you go and work with this company in India. Okay, so that there won't be a predatory pricing. I use the word predatory pricing. This kind of strategy is possible so that an emerging company who want to come out of India, it's very easy for the competition to kill an emerging new company, new entrant to the field. So. Two points I want to emphasize, apart from what Ashita and other colleagues have put it. One, you need a firm support from the government. And we expect organizations like Meiti or uh, to help this MSME so that we will have a cluster, we will have a group. We all can work within our limitation. We all can work. Uh, there's a peaceful coexistence and there is collaboration. And the MSMEs of India can collaborate with the multinational companies. And we are not going to compete them. Well, while we may be able to compete them, but we are going to tell them, excuse me, guys, we are here. We have the capability. We have the quality. And we have the ethics. Very important point brought out by uh, my friend from Acer. Ethics is very, very important. So we share the ethics. Uh, we have the capability. We have the quality. And we tell them, look here, we are here to collaborate with you. Point here is there is space for each and everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Chairman. Uh, Sajit, uh, thank you for your inputs. Uh, essentially, you say these uh, synergies are actually quite uh, possible and uh, the small companies, Indian uh, SMEs need some kind of government support. So uh, we have uh, Vicky, who is uh, essentially IT hardware product company here. And uh, you talked about predatory pricing and competing with large companies and all that. So Vicky, exactly that's what is doing uh, day in day out, and uh, and somebody also talked about uh, scaling up SMEs. So uh, Vicky, like, uh, what is your uh, what are your views on uh, the challenges uh, you face in uh, scaling uh, Indian SMEs? 
and the possible synergies uh, you know with uh, large of course companies so vicky yeah uh, you are on mute so uh, thank you everyone uh, very good evening so i i think uh, right from ashita sudhir goyal and then uh, manwani ji and then uh, rajesh raizada everybody talked about uh, the same things you know called uh, uh, the basic hygiene even the you know motorola guy uh, he also talked about the basic hygiene was missing i completely agree so even because the same thing uh, with my company uh, just 3 4 years back okay uh, what is that basic hygiene means uh, you know the ppt people process technology this is what every small organization and large organizations will follow okay this was hugely lacking in my company uh, just you know 3 3 and a half year back okay i was working super hard like you know i was i, I am a ferrari car but i i was driving on you know bangalore roads okay the moment i i applied this uh, you know ppt a uh, people process technology uh, then you can leave this earth orbit and you can try to land on mars okay that is what the perseverance rover did so the patience of buddha what you know manwani ji has said so so for all uh, to achieve all these things the scale up okay uh we need you know all the smes uh, one attribute which is required for uh, smes is called learning continuously learning day in and day out learning and unlearning okay so in this uh, uh in this pandemic okay i attended several of my you know uh, principal company uh and the agency you know discussions everybody said you know a uh, two things uh, you know every company has went through on two things uh, for this pandemic one is respond and one more is digital transformation these are the two things majorly you know every company uh, i mean uh, spoke on uh, in every of the meeting how you responded and how you means you know if you want to respond you need to unlearn okay so uh, so i think you know the crux is yes uh, quality marketing and unfortunately today uh, you know there are uh, a, a fixed things that to, to get that hygiene if we learn about iso 9001 and 2015 uh, uh, standard process it has been written it's there for last 30 years okay so i mean if we learn this uh, one standard automatically uh, we can achieve that basic hygiene and uh, automatically you know uh, things fall in place so uh, i know you know personally uh three and a half year back uh, i myself was not confident enough to scale up uh, even to 2x but now i am confident enough to scale up even 100x i am going in a uh, right direction because of only one simple thing just anybody can type ppt people process technology okay even i was listening the other day you know at the uh, gm rao you know who built the uh, you know airports in india okay he was also talking about the same thing okay so the people process technology it's a very simple thing uh, but people who understands that okay and if the basic basic hygiene is there i am sure uh, you know the multinationals like sambian has said they will come to you rather than uh, you know they, they will come back to us because there is a huge shortage of you know quality talented uh, people on this planet no doubt about it so Uh, so for me i think uh, uh, the challenge is the knowledge gap uh, between uh, the the language what mnc stock and the language of this uh, uh, ms ms is completely different is like a, you know uh, they are talking spanish and we are talking hindi so end of the day we don't understand their terminology at all uh, and once uh, the, the same thing happened to me around 3 uh, 3 and a half years back but when i jot down each and everything what they are talking about when i you know constantly you know uh, learn day in and day out i am sure you know uh, we can challenge the mncs okay today you know when uh, you know when i go to an mnc you know i am challenging them hey this is my quality checklist this is my you know process can you able to order my quality process because i'll send sgs world's number one company for a quality inspection 
okay even when i go to foxconn i will challenge foxconn what i need how i need okay so i think uh, the barrier is the knowledge for smes i'm sure uh, you know today uh, we are all using uh, every of the tool which is around us that all those tools are built with highest quality and that highest quality has built only with lot of you know uh, so uh, what i'll tell is you know uh, my my uh, personal observation product is 25% and there is uh, 75% is something else whether you call the company culture company ethics the process uh, the technology okay so everybody focus on that 25% but not on that uh, 75% including that uh, mindset as manmani uh, g said that you know the patience of buddha so uh, msmes uh, definitely they want uh, you know baby to be delivered in 9 days but unfortunately the nature is still 9 months okay so uh, i think lot of things uh, i strongly feel uh, me myself compare 3 years back and after 3 years and uh, uh, at the current phase you know if rdp goes i'm sure you know uh, next 3 years and next 6 years uh, we we built a world class process uh, uh, as you know uh, he rightly said uh, sembian uh, in a small uh, msme is said the dependency is completely on the owner everything he has to update a voucher entry and he has to pursue a quality and how, how means in, in this ppt the first p is the people so you need to uh, you know uh, be patient in taking people into your organization i personally do you know half a day interview with people okay to let anybody into my organization that's a first success once you you take that kind of quality people and uh, let them do their job okay I, i'm sure you know because that's your decision and you have chosen you'll get a wonderful results so i i completely agree with everyone's uh, but lot of learning is required uh, uh, so if that is there i'm sure uh, the scale up will happen automatically Uh, i have seen personally in my last 4 years we focused more on uh, uh, product quality and uh, people process technology uh, trust me customers are chasing us now rather than uh, you know rdp has become a pull rather than push okay so because of uh, we we address the you know core fundamental uh, uh, things so and, and so i think i always you know telling to uh, all my msme members if you want to do something i don't know is it easy for an sme to uh, you know adapt all these respond learn uh, i am not sure you know because it's a difficult thing to change people's mindset uh, we could not able to change uh, you know people uh, so i i think this is what my 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 personal experience uh, uh ganeshi and and why i am very bad ganeshi whenever you call i'll not take your call or whenever you you ask me i'll tell you that i'll submit something but i cannot because i am i am like you know you know i'm still so trying, trying know. to when i call you you are uh, interviewing people <laughs> i know what you are doing <laughs> so vicky thank you for kind of you know giving this uh, mantra of uh, ppt and uh, particularly in ppt really emphasizing the importance of people dimension and uh, i'm sure all the audience and people present actually you know we all connect with that very well so just to uh, you know i think very useful points uh, all people shared different perspectives coming from different uh, kind of uh, industries and background so just uh, to wrap up this uh, uh, we just want uh, one minute each uh, to give uh, action items for all the uh, three stakeholders what uh, uh, msc uh, uh, the sme should do what large organizations should do and what government should do so each one of us will go round the table uh, one minute each and uh, please share action items you know just the bullet points so starting with uh, mr manohani uh, yeah thank you very much uh, well as i said earlier uh, uh, you know clearly the smes have to look at uh, a long term perspective um as uh, vikram ji just said uh, you know you can't look at a short term perspective you have to be in this for the long haul uh, you're not going to get results overnight but you have to wait patiently to get your results so you must hang in there that is uh, uh, you know for the sme 
sector by itself i would say that uh, the the entrepreneurs have to have that uh, you know mindset to hang in there uh, as far as the government uh, perspective is concerned uh, somebody rightly said that you don't have to create you know four sme champions or five sme champions because some are going to fail so you you know we have to look at creating uh, 500 uh, sme champions uh, that's what the government should look at so therefore the the pli scheme that comes uh, per, you know maybe there's a separate pli scheme for sme sector uh, where they can identify you know uh, 500 uh, or more uh, the the last point that i would like to uh, you know uh, emphasize on what i earlier said was that somehow it is the thing of the sme sector that you know the the central government is doing uh, enough or at least taking the uh, right steps in the right direction but uh, the gov- the state governments also come, have to come on board thank you um, that thank you uh, uh, so moving on to uh, mr rajesh uh, like uh, uh, would you like to give your two cents on the action items for all the three stakeholders mr uh, rajesh rajada um sanati we have mr rajesh or uh, i think so it looks like sir he has moved out okay so let's oh, move on to around? uh is he around yeah uh, we don't see him so okay we'll come back to him if he kind of reconnects uh, let's move on to mr uh, uh, rahul uh, gupta oh he also dropped out so then i think uh, we should go to mr sambian like uh, would you like to just summarize uh, giving uh, action items for all the three stakeholders yeah yeah thanks uh, ganesh ji and nice to hear from everybody i am here ganesh Ganesh, oh, you but but Rahul, then why don't you, uh, uh, Samian? We'll just come back to you. Just uh, you know, okay. So Rahul, like uh, one minute, uh, you please uh, give action items for all the three, uh, three stakeholders. Three things. Number one, let us make a database of all all and. semi com i'm not able to hear so i think uh, he has some connection Please issue uh, we can uh, go to sambian uh, in oh okay sorry factory to state number 2 yes uh, rahul we can't hear, uh, hear you properly i so hear my first point hello uh looks like uh, well, there is some some uh, connection well, issue at your hear my point i said sir, sir uh, please try make a data yes, so mr gupta we are unable to hear you electronics man okay sir try try lo- uh, not using your video that will save some bandwidth is that are you able to hear me now yes sir no yeah, actually yes. very 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 well go ahead okay i said that my first point is is that we need to factoring uh rahul i'm sorry we still can't hear you we'll just uh, i'm sorry but we'll come back to you Uh, let's just cover other people so, uh, uh, number 2 i yes. think okay okay rahul uh, just uh, yeah. uh, hang on there we'll just cover other people and hopefully your bandwidth improves by then so uh, send me over to you can you please uh, yeah uh, you are mute Uh, thank you thanks uh, ganesh ji and uh, thanks for everybody for sharing your thoughts and vicky i'm happy to see you and happy to hear all the points because uh, those vindicates all my uh, thoughts and sharing what i have been doing with people across so so that's that's a very good example vicky stands in front of us so that's very nice to hear so I'll, 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 that's exactly what is required what i i was saying like analyze the gap 
fix these things and very smartly uh, we gave this ppt this is exactly what i was saying the basic hygiene technology as part of your business products and uh, services is very different and technology internal to your own processes is very different that's where you link with the uh, bigger organization that's very very important so that is one thing which uh, has to be done and aim for uh, this this uh, first leap where you can be there uh, with in the hand in hand with many uh, shaking hands with the global companies working with them and from there propel to be on the platform where you will be to the global uh, in the global supply chain that will automatically give the scale and the sustenance from there the yeah, idea to be built built uh, with, with strong commitment from the leadership and then grown step by step and for the second stakeholder as i said the global companies yes they will be ready to support but of course the challenges are the uh, pressure on the cost and everything right but why should think of this why should the global companies be working on so much on a longer supply chain importing from some other country bringing somebody here look and look at the snop uh, cost of those things how much we have to sit in with work on those things the time cost energy everything if uh, infra uh, in, in india is available for that the value the chain and the supply chain the global companies will obviously uh, look for the money this is a huge opportunity for the global companies also and they are willing to support and right now pli in every segment starting from the uh, the end, end device like the mobile and then accessories to that and the components to that everything is adding up to that so these things will surely bring in uh, a lot of opportunities there for these uh, penetration into this uh, industry third point to the government um, i was chatting with uh, george the other day yeah uh, this was also slightly touched upon uh, by uh, one of our panelists here i think mr srijit uh, government side yeah there cannot be a mandatory stuff or anywhere uh, pushed on the industry that will be very counterproductive at the same time there could be some supporting action from the government saying so much of percentage if at all somebody is going for there is an additional uh, benefit somewhere from the sun is taken from the sun not mandatory not put into the industry but it is an option for the industry to pick up as it is so these are the three main things i would uh, say mr ganesh thank you sambian and uh, uh, shridit uh, would you please uh, just uh, summarize uh, thank you uh, your suggestions yeah uh, so my, my, my yeah my my first point to the mncc is uh, you should come out with an open plan uh, you should come out and tell the industry what you expect of course we know number 2 you should have a mentor kind of uh, approach towards developing msmes in india second point to the government which my friend just now put it is very clearly uh, it doesn't have to be that hostile but it should have a very clear demarcation uh, to support the msmes of india it should be something slightly different from what you are following just now this is to support this companies during the crawl and the walk phase third phase to the msmes of india uh, like rahul uh, ji put it very correctly we should have a, a full database and we should also have a informal uh, yeah, informal grouping maybe chat maybe organized by me uh, in which we all know what we can work together this is my three points thank you back to you sir thank you sajit and uh, uh, vicky uh, you want to add uh, to the points you kind of uh, clarified so uh, towards large companies uh, no comments and uh, for msmes they must be very passionate about product people process technology and when it comes to government uh, uh, my uncle is sri narendra modi said in a atmanirbhar bharat uh, speech minimum government maximum governance so it is nothing to expect from a government because the government mind is very clear that they wanted to be minimum government and maximum governance my uncle said okay i want to follow my uncle modi ji so uh, these are the my <laughs> things <laughs> so we okay, thank you uh, rahul uh, 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 can you quickly summarize uh, we heard your first point that is a database can uh, would you like to add the other two points yeah. or other two stakeholders yeah the, the the second point is that i think uh, 
as made SME chapter under the banner of made, we need to approach the MSME ministry instead of METI to see what kind of a PLI scheme or a motivation scheme that can be done for MSME. And MSME, when you really want a big mass, we need to bring things like turnover of 5 crores or that range, not 200 crores. Because then you will not be able to gather the mass. And the third point is, I think MATE has all the biggies as its members. Let all these biggies roll out a very clear plan about what is their procurement requirement. So let them define. And if they can follow the same pattern as the automobile sector followed, Maruti went out and developed these so many small scale industries around them. And today they just sit and enjoy and all the MSMEs are working and making the car. So, yes, Rahul, uh, thank you very much. And um, I think uh, uh, with this, uh, we uh, come to end of this uh, panel discussion and um, really very uh, diverse and interesting actually points uh, came out. Uh, I think uh, each one of you for sparing your time and uh, um, for your kind of uh, sharing wisdom. So, uh, Sanita, that's uh, all from our side. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, you are on mute, Sanita. Thank you, session moderator, and thank you, panelists, for your deliberations. Uh, thank you so much indeed. Uh, I just wanted to check with Mr. Ravi Tripathi. Is he around? And if his audio is uh, working, then we'll have the presentation. Can you hear me? Mr. Ravi Tripathi, Procurement Manager, India, Vivo. Mr. Tripathi. So if he's not around, then we'll uh, move over to the last bit of the session. Shall we move on to the last bit of the session? Let's wait for a minute or so. All let, right. let, yeah, let me try to give him a call. Okay. Uh, Ravi is trying to, I think he's, yeah, is he's Ravi trying to speak, but we cannot hear. It, I can see that. How come is that uh, audience? Yeah, please. We will wait for another one minute for you. Thank you. So, uh, Sanity is trying to join from uh, his headset. Uh, he has asked us to wait for one more minute. If it still doesn't happen, then we'll move. Okay, wait, that's fine.
Let's move on, sir. It looks like yeah, I, yeah. I think I think so because I think it's not getting so. okay. All right. Uh, well, with this, I would like to now invite Sri Nitin Kunkolinkar, President Mate, <coughs> to kindly propose a vote of thanks and also give the closing remarks of the session and formally draw this event to a closure. Over to you. Yeah. Thank you, Santi. At the outset, let me thank the moderator of this panel and uh, Mr. Ganesh Jivani for moderating it so nicely. And I think you take almost to discuss major points pertaining to the MSME and a synergy with uh, multinationals and bigger companies. I must thank Sudhir ji for his uh, very well laid thought process about synergy between MSME and the large companies. And he himself represents one of the large player in this uh, system. And his thoughts were really nice. I had opportunity of listening to him very carefully. I thank my very adorable friend Amrit Bhai. Amrit Ji, uh, thanks for your uh, constant support, mate. Thanks for your participation. My thanks to Rahul Gupta, who has been really spirited in this moment of uh, one time. I never believed that SME can really grow up at mate. I mean, what I mean is could come out with so many uh, synergies. And he has been real support, he has been chasing this for long. And today I can see a very good uh, team at MATE which talks about SME. And I think our strength is only going to grow up. Thanks to all other panelists who, has, who have actively participated. Our young and dynamic Ashita. She has been also a very vibrant uh, supporter of this cause. I appreciate your contribution to MATE as well. It's time that we build a bigger synergy. We create a forum for SME across the country. Get all the stakeholders linked to SME in electronics under the banner of MATE or Elsina, and we work together. It's not that uh, we should compete within the association, we should build a synergy within the associations. When PLI scheme was getting discussed, we had contributed immensely on part of MSME also. If you can, for the first time, the government is talking about business promotion schemes with inclusion of SMEs and, and that started with electronics. And I think that way government stand is very clear. They won't come out with any schemes by excluding SMEs of the country. Earlier, more of schemes were focused on uh, protection based schemes. I mean, they were all restrictive. You had to cap everything. For the first time, the government has come with an open scheme wherein they tell you to grow and grow and still avail all the benefits. I think it's time for us to look at this particular aspect of the government and start focusing. So I must also thank of India for enabling this. I must also put on record that I noted what Amritji has just mentioned about the state partnerships and that is what we have been talking about for last almost two to three years. No scheme linked to manufacturing can be driven only by central government initiatives. It's not a software business. It's more of a hardware business where the state engagement is extremely important and made Elsina, ISA and other institutions should come forward to build a synergy with the state governments. Today, 70 to 80 percent of the manufacturing happens in five states. We need to focus on these states to come out with ease of doing business, logistic support, improve the port connectivity, 
that would help SMEs in a big way. Today, most of the multinationals are talking about shifting their supply chain from uh, beyond one or two countries, and they are trying to relocate in India. And when they try to relocate India, and I think with COVID times, it will be possible for them only if they build synergy with the Indian SME. I think this is where we all should work towards attracting this uh, investments and try and work on collaborations so that SME sector gets benefited. I thank you all for your contribution and I'm sure MATE will work together and will ensure that MSME gets best of the support, not only from the MATE Secretariat, but also from the large stakeholders like the big multinationals that we have. Intel also had conducted a program to incorporate SMEs. I think that more and more companies would come forward. And I think we should work on this. Thanks a lot. Now let me move on my formal vote of thanks for the dire uh, event. Especially in these challenging two weeks, I wish to thank all the government officials who joined us despite the challenges of COVID impact. It was indeed a challenge for MATE. We weren't sure three days back that whether we, we could complete this uh, event. The way uh, many people were picking out, our own secretarial staff was affected. And I must first put on my deepest gratitude to uh, my both the vice president and especially to Harish uh, Harish for Harish Krishnan for leading this from front and ensuring that everything goes smooth. George and his team worked very tirelessly. Great efforts by them, which could ensure that this event was successful. Almost four to five of our people were down with COVID and other implications. I wish to thank the 60 plus industry captains from across the world and India having participated and supported this event. We had very good deliberation on manufacturing of products, manufacturing of sub-assemblies, manufacturing of discrete components, electronics hardware system, R&D system, and electronic and repair services. We had very interesting deliberations at ERSO uh, event. A lot of valuable inputs have come up. And I think if MATE drives this agenda forward, we can create a new era of services in electronic hardware repairs. We can target $20 billion business annually to begin with, and at least 5 million jobs in two to three years. That is achievable, and we had made study on this. Today, there were very interesting dis discussions. I must thank uh, Sudipto also for uh, driving this initiative at MAID. Let me also thank my mate secretariat for their strong support and they worked really tirelessly. A lot of good things have happened. I won't discuss that in detail. I must thank my friend Amritji and his team at Elsina, President of Elsina and Secretary General Raju Goyal, ISR Chairman and CEO. Ashita from SEDA, we thank all the government ministries in particular. Needless to say, MEIT was very strongly backing this. DOT, DPIIT, we are touched by the gesture of uh, Shri Ajay Kumar Sani. Instead of he being unwell, he still could make it up for the event. We are really grateful to him. Thankful to Niti Aayog, DGFT, MOEF, DRDO, and Government of Karnataka. Electronic Sector Skill Council for their constant support. We thank our sponsors, especially Cisco, Vivo, HP, Matrix, Acer, HSBC, Smile, and TVSC for their sponsorships. Without their support, this event was would not have been possible. Mate also thank its knowledge partners who put in more than 180 hours of one is to one interviews with industry captains and domain specialists. <clears throat> we would like to thank especially Deloitte, Lexport, Aventium, and Mate in-house research team. 
I think our execution partners, famous event, virtual event platform, in particular, our Enster Puneet, our PR agency, 10 minute to one, and in particular young lady, Miss Shilpa. Our compare did an outstanding job, and I must thank Miss Sanati for a wonderful job. Our content copywriters, quad investors, advisories, in particular, Mr. Joseph. Our website partner, Ms. Texaga. I wish to thank the MIT SME chapter for leading the thrust to get the Indian SMD, SME ready to exploit the upcoming manufacturing opportunity that will arise from $300 billion of electronic manufacturing that we target through PLI. I wish to thank my GC and the Secretariat who work silently and tirelessly behind the scene to make this event a grand success. I cannot but mention the support given by Mary and Oshan of Matrix Comsec in our Gujarat PR efforts. Finally, in conclusion, our work has just started. We now have to drive these recommendations with each of your help, working jointly with Government India to make 2030 the decade of electronics and telecom hardware manufacturing for India. I wish you all a very safe time ahead. Do take care and thank you very much for everything that you have done for the meet. Thank you very much. Good night. Shubharatri. Thank you very much, Mr. President. With that, we conclude the event. Thank you so much, gentlemen, ladies and gentlemen, for your time. Here's wishing that you all remain safe and hope the coming days are that of uh, hope and good news. Thank you. Good night. I, and I, I, I also assure you, once this COVID issue settles, let's plan something big in Goa. And it will be a pleasure to host you all in Goa. And Harish, take a lead now. Thank you. Bye. Good night. Thank you. Bye bye. Good night. Thank you and good night, everyone. Bye bye. Good night. Bye. Good night. Good night.